formula number one holding period written you purchase a stock for 200 you sell it at a price of 220 after having received a dividend of 10 so total return that you've earned is 30 on a investment of 200 that would give you a holding period return of 15 percent next is arithmetic mean return which is nothing but arithmetical average of returns that you earned on different stocks next one is geometric mean let us say you have earned return of 10% 15% and minus 20% over a period of 3 years. Geometric mean of these numbers would be 1.1 into 1.15 into 0 0.80 and since these are 3 years we will have to take the third root of these numbers. Next one is money weighted rate of return. Money weighted rate of return is nothing but IRR of the portfolio and money weighted rate of return is calculated for what kind of fund managers open end or close end can we time the market in money weighted rate of return yes and therefore we are going to calculate this for closed end fund manager because it allows you to time the market time weighted rate of return is nothing but geometric mean of different holding period returns and it is typically calculated for open end fund managers so let's do an example to understand how these are calculated let us say that a fund manager at time z a stock at time 0 was 100 at time 1 it was 130 and at time 2 it was 150 it paid a dividend of 1 at the end of year 1 and 1 at the end of year 2 a fund manager purchased one stock here he purchased 10 stocks at the end of year 1 and he sold all the 11 stocks at the end of year 2. If you want to calculate money weighted rate of return for him, we just have to calculate the IRR on the portfolio. So we'll have to find out what are the cash flows. The cash flows here is minus 100. The cash flows here would be minus 1300 plus one dividend that he's going to receive. So that is going to be one. That means the total cash flow is going to be 1299 negative and the cash flow here that he's going to sell all the 11 stocks at the rate of 150 so that's 1650 plus he's also going to receive dividend and dividend on all the 11 stocks so that's going to be another 11 here which is going to be 1661 so on your financial calculator press the cash flow button say second clear work 100 negative is cash flow 0, 1299 negative is cash flow 1 and 1661 positive is cash flow 2 and then calculate IRR which would be 17.27. So this is the money weighted rate of return for the portfolio. How do we calculate time weighted rate of return? The simple rule of thumb is in time weighted you just have to assume that the fund manager could purchase only one stock which means you have to ignore the entire quantity it becomes irrelevant. So then what is the rate of return he earned in the first period? He invested 100 rupees and that amount became 130 plus 1 in the form of dividend. So first year return is 131 divided by 100 into what was the second year return? he reinvested that stock at 130 which became 151 so 151 divided by 130 and carefully notice the difference in numerator and denominator this was 131 but whereas this is 130 that means we kind of have not reinvested that one again and then the second root of this number since this is for the period of two years and that would give us a rate of return of how much Twenty point twenty three point three five percent. So that's your time weighted rate of return. Then the next concept is population variance or standard deviation. Now there could be two possible ways in which this could be tested. One they've given you a historical data. If it's a historical data, the formula is straightforward. Summation of x minus x bar square 
divided by n this would be the formula for variance and if you take under root of this number this would be the formula for standard deviation what if they've given you probability data if the probability data is available then summation of probability into x minus x bar square this would be the variance and the standard deviation would be simply under root of this number so which means this 1 divided by n gets replaced with multiplication factor of the probability which would vary from observation to observation the sample variance and standard deviation works in the same fashion the only difference is your denominator changes so summation of x minus x bar square divided by n minus 1 this number under root is the sample standard deviation how do we calculate covariance again we can be dealing with the historical data or we could be dealing with the probability data if it's historical data it would be summation of x minus x bar multiplied with y minus y bar divided by n this is for population and summation of x minus x bar y minus y bar divided by n minus 1 this would be the sample covariance and what if we've been given a probability distribution then summation of this 1 by n gets replaced with probability into x minus x bar into y minus y bar this is straightforward the formula of covariance another important thing to remember is that unit of covariance and variance is always that unit square or percentage square and percentage square is meaningless okay so both variance and covariance unit is going to be percentage square now how do we standardize this covariance by calculating a number called co correlation coefficient so the formula for correlation is covariance between a and b divided by standard deviation of a multiplied with standard deviation of b now we know that covariance is percentage square standard deviation is percentage standard deviation is percentage so it gets eliminated and therefore correlation does not have a unit correlation is typically between minus 1 and plus 1 minus 1 is perfectly negative correlation plus 1 is perfect positive correlation next value is standard deviation of portfolio of two assets standard deviation of portfolio two asset is calculated using following formula weight into standard deviation of the first asset raised to 2 plus weight into standard deviation of the second asset again square plus 2 into weight 1 standard deviation 1 weight 2 standard deviation 2 into correlation coefficient the whole number is under root now how to deal with this kind of question on the exam so we'll do a simplified example let us say we have two assets asset A and asset B the standard deviation of asset A is 10% and standard deviation of asset B is 20% the weight that we've put in in asset A is 70% and the weight that we've put in asset B is 30% correlation coefficient between these values is 0.8 now there are three options given option A option B option C let us say option A is 10.6 and option B is 4.4 and option B is some other value without calculation you can directly find no the answer of this is going to be option B why is that if the correlation of A and B is going to be 1 if correlation is 1 then the formula is nothing but the weighted average and at one correlation what would be the standard deviation standard deviation would be 10 into 70 percent which is 7 and 12 into 30 percent which would be 3.6 so total standard deviation of the portfolio is going to become 10.6 if the correlation is minus 1 then it is nothing but a minus b so then the standard deviation of the portfolio is going to become 7 minus 3.6 which is going to be 
4.4 any other correlation so correlation of one means there is absolutely no benefit of diversification so highest possible standard deviation of the portfolio correlation of minus one means highest benefit of correlation and therefore lowest possible standard deviation for only any correlation values between this the standard deviation is going to be between these so if the options are 10.6 and 4.4 and if the correlation is 0.8 we know that it is not the answer c is not the answer the answer is going to be b but let's find out exactly how much on your financial calculator so do it with me 10 into 0.7 10 into 0.7 x square STO1 12 into 0.3 12 into 0.3 x square STO2 2 into 0.7 into 0.3 into 10 into 12 into 0.8 equal to STO3 RCL1 plus RCL2 plus RCL3 equal to under root 10 point 1 1 so the answer is 10 point 1 1 which is between the highest value and lowest value so what you would remember for the exam if correlation is plus 1 then the portfolio standard deviation is nothing but weighted average if correlation is minus 1, then it is nothing but simply A minus B of that weighted average, 7 minus 3.6. For all other values of correlation, the standard deviation is going to be between these two extreme values of 10.6 and 4.4. Are we good to go ahead? Next one, expected return on portfolio. This is again nothing but a simple weighted average. Let's say we have asset A, B and C expected return is 10%, 15% and 20%. The weight in these assets is 10% again, 40% and 50%. We can calculate a weighted average. 10 into 10% would be 1, 15 into 40% would be 6 and 20 into 50% would be 10. That would give us an expected return of 17, which is your expected return from the portfolio. Let's move on to next topic now.